Good morning, it's August 21st, and this is To My Liberal Friends. Liar, liar, pants on fire. When we were kids, we all heard that little chant. When someone told an obvious lie, the rest of the group would be unmerciful in calling them out. But in politics, it seems that you can lie anytime you want, and you will find those that defend you to the end. Unfortunately, in our current presidential race, we seem to have two serial liars competing for the job. I think we all have come to know that Donald Trump has lied on many occasions, and the root of his current legal problems are the lies he told about the 2020 election being stolen from him. Trump will defend himself in court by saying he believed that he was what he was saying, so therefore was not a lie, at least in his own mind. The courts will have to decipher what to believe. I think in the cases in Washington, D.C. and Georgia, this will be the key issue. Did Donald Trump believe what he was saying, so therefore it was not a criminal act? There are unindicted co-conspirators in these cases, and I suspect that both of the prosecutors are hoping they can flip one of them to offer testimony that Trump knew what he was saying was false, but decide to say it anyway in some hope of overturning the election and remaining in the Oval Office. For the media's part, they've attacked Trump over and over, unfairly, I think, and declared him guilty without even blinking an eyelash. Their political bias has shown through, and they have found him guilty of all charges. They have abandoned any form of journalistic neutrality. Then we have to look at Joe Biden. This is someone that apparently cannot separate fact from fiction on some of the most basic things. This past week, in a speech, he claimed to have watched the bridge collapse in Pittsburgh when it occurred. Here's what he said, quote, A lot of you were with me when I was in Pittsburgh. And by the way, the Pittsburgh is a city of bridges. More bridges in Pittsburgh than any other city in America. I watched that bridge collapse. I got there and saw it collapse with over 200 feet off the ground going over a valley, and it collapsed, end quote. Well, he did get there later and saw the damage that had occurred, but he was nowhere near the scene where the bridge collapsed. It happened six hours before he arrived in Pittsburgh. He could have said he witnessed the damage, but being Joe Biden, he had to claim he saw it. In his feeble mind, he probably believes he saw it. He said this in a speech in Milwaukee, and it became a doozy of a speech as Joe said a lot of spacious things that nobody could confirm. He repeated a version of a family anecdote he told in April. He said Tuesday that his grandfather, who had worked as an oil company executive, died just days before he was born himself in the same hospital. Quote, and by the way, my grandpa Biden, who died very young, he was died in the hospital. I was born in six days before I was there. I mean, before I was born, end quote. But none of this little anecdote was true. His paternal grandfather, who had worked in the oil industry, Joseph Harry Biden, died in a hospital in Baltimore, Maryland in September 1941. The president was born more than a year later in November 1942 and at a different hospital in Scranton, Pennsylvania. By his maternal grandfather, Ambrose Joseph Finnegan, did die at the Scranton Hospital where the president was born, but in 1957 when the president was 14 years old. And as I said, this speech was loaded with a lot of fiction. Biden claimed, quote, and unlike the last president in my first two years in office, even with all we've done, I'm the first one to cut the federal debt by $1,700,000,000, Well, this called for another cleanup on Al 7 by the White House staff where the official transcript, they struck the word debt and inserted the word deficit. Biden has not reduced the national debt by $1, and in fact, has seen it grow substantially. It was about $27.8 trillion when he took office, and it's nearing $33 trillion today. And even saying he reduced the deficit is quite disingenuous. When you spend so much in one year through ill-thought-out pandemic spending, the deficit has to come down. And most independent analysts will point out that Biden's own new laws and executive actions have significantly added to current and projected future deficits. So much for reducing either the deficit or the debt. And in that same story, he rehashed, he rehashed the Amtrak story about his conversation with the Amtrak conductor, Angelo Negri that he has told us before. We've all heard that before, and it's been debunked over and over, but like most old men with some form of dementia, he keeps telling it because in his mind he believes it. He seems to ignore that Angelo Negri was already dead when this conversation allegedly took place in Biden's mind. But he tells the story and concludes, quote, true story, I swear to you, God, end quote. But the story, I swear to you, is not true. But the biggest lie that Joe Biden has been telling for the past three years involves his son, Hunter Biden. How many times have you heard or read Joe Biden say that his son did not make millions of dollars from foreign deals? How many times have you heard him say he never spoke to his son about his business dealings? 
In the presidential debates in October 2020, when Trump accused Hunter Biden of making this money, Joe said, quote, none of that is true, end quote. When he said it, it, when he, said it he was defended by his friends in the media. They ignored any reference to Hunter Biden, even declaring the famous laptop as Russian disinformation. But the hearings being held up by Republicans on Capitol Hill are finally having some effect. On CNN, Chief Biden defender Jake Tapper finally had to admit that he was duped. And on his show last Thursday, he said, quote, Biden was wrong in saying his son did not make millions from foreign sources. He would not go all the way and say that Biden was lying, saying, quote, I don't know if he was lying about it. He might not have been told by Hunter, but this is a blind spot and it's a problem, end quote. But guess what, Jake? The public's not as complicit as you want to be. They now know he was flat out lying, and the witness after witness has come forth saying Joe was somehow involved. The poll out now says 50% of the people believe Hunter Biden was involved in illegal activity. We now hear that Vice President Biden, while with the Obama administration, used a pseudonym email address to com communicate with his son and possibly his business partners. The House Committee has asked the National Archives to produce those emails, and they should. It might finally prove what Joe knew or did not know about what his son was up to in the foreign, these foreign nations. As a voting public, we deserve to know. This has been To My Liberal Friends. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, leave a comment or recommend it to your friends and hit the subscribe button.